None of us had been recruited back in those days. You just decided to come to Syracuse University and volunteered to play lacrosse. And uh, he struck me as being like uh, Peter Fonda from Easy Rider. He was just this tall, laconic guy, didn't speak very loudly, kind of long hair. And, uh, you know, for, for the uh, the time, he was just the, the right guy with the, uh, the right attitude. He wasn't uh, some crew cut Marine you know, phys ed teacher with a, with a clipboard and a whistle. He was much more than a coach even back then. He was a mentor. And he provided us, you know, with our introduction to not just lacrosse, but the, co the college experience, and he was wonderful. He didn't coach me as a varsity coach, but certainly as a freshman coach. And he helped out the varsity team when we go on our trips and go down to the but it was, it was always very, um, um, I think his approach was almost like a thinking man's approach to the game versus, you know, a um, run them over, you know, the big guy wins all the time kind of uh, uh, issue. I, always, I think that his ability to see how things were going in the game and to make adjustments as we go, just like we do in life, their, uh, his magnetism and, and insp how inspirational he was for them to uh, succeed in life, not only just lacrosse, but he taught a lot of life lessons to people. He made a huge impact on all the players that I know of, especially, you know, my team in the earlier years, we didn't have the national championship, but um, I can tell you this, he taught us more in life than I've learned from anybody. He by far is the most important individual in my life that had an impact that every day I get up and uh, every day I, I put one of those lessons that he taught me about life to work in my day-to-day -day living. I really enjoy the opportunity to be here representing Central New York today. Got a lot of proud boys, 28 strong, they worked hard to be here. It's new for us, but I hope it's the start of a habit. You know how many coaches stop a, stop our, the team buses and send us all out in the Smithsonian because none of us had ever been there. You know we're from upstate New York, and you know he stops at a place and he runs in and buys a two thousand year old piece of fabric from Egypt to put into one of his collages. You know it's just that part of the way his brain worked um, was something he brought to the game. The Brad Cots, Cots rolls in. He's got an opening. He scores. <laughs> I wanted to go there because of him, to be honest with you. I was impressed with him. Um, uh, a lot of my friends that I played with went there as well. Uh, it was he, he gathered up the best players in the area, and I wanted to be a part of that. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And Roy gave us some freedoms, and uh, you know, it was it was really a unique style for us, and uh, it made us blossom a little bit, to be honest with you. And he had the, uh, you know. The the, the wherewithal, the insight, whatever you want to call it, to, to let Brad Cotts be Brad Cotts, to let Tim Nelson be Tim Le Nelson, let the Gates do it their way, and then later on the Powells and, and the rest of it. Um, but one thing all those guys had in common were they were all team players, and the ball always moved, and, and, the, and the best Syracuse lacrosse, the best highlights, um, you know, very often it would start with a save with the goalie, and then you know, connect the dots with five great passes down the field to, to put the ball in the goal at the other end. He demanded a lot from us, but he did it with, with a lot of love. Like, he, he believed in his players. I'll never forget, like, you know, before games, he'd put his hand um, on my shoulder and he would, like, whisper something to me. And, like, right away, I felt like I could take on the world. So, like, he knew how to tap into people individually. He knew how to motivate people individually. Some of his pregame speeches had nothing to do with sports and being tough, but you left understanding what was at stake and you left understanding like what was important for the team in this journey in this season. So he was masterful at crafting that. He's an artist, um, you know, he's a, a sculptor um, with a beautiful imagination and he's not your typical coach who's gonna yell and scream or, or, or have these, you know, cliche sayings or a lot of coach speak with him. He's a real person. And, and when you connect with him, you don't want to let him down. You want to feel like you need to win for this man. 
you know, we went out and it was just, it was just the purest form of lacrosse. And the way Coach Simmons held himself and spoke to us was so different um, than anyone I had ever been around. And I, I caught a bit of it during my recruiting process, but I really caught the gist of it all and why he was a legend and why teams won prior to him and, and had all this excitement and all this buzz uh, after my first day of practice. And, and it was really, you know, who he was and, and, uh, and, and, and who, you know, what he stood for and who he let us be, which was the key to it all. It was a lot less uh, about the X's and O's with Coach Simmons Jr. and much more about uh, life, uh, creativity, free spirit, freewheeling, um, you know, and we were able to, uh, you know, have our expressions live out there on the lacrosse field. Uh, which was really cool. You were never afraid to take a behind the back shot or shoot the ball between your legs. If you believed that you could do something, then you knew that Coach Simmons had your back. Well, I, I think Roy, Roy Simmons Jr. has, I've said this to multiple people, but he has x-ray vision. He has the ability, you know, all, all of us, the rest of us have five senses. I think he has 35. Uh, he has the ability to look deep in, into people past their skin and uh, you know bring out the dreamer in them uh, whether they know it's there or not he was that guy that said this is a creative game and it's for creative people he uh, he had a great demeanor uh, very intelligent understood the game of lacrosse uh, and most importantly, I think he understood his players. So it was, uh, I learned quite a bit uh, from Roy as far as uh, coaching technique and, and how to work with uh, individuals. And he's just a, a, a good human being. And I think he was a nice mix between uh, himself, current day coaches, and his father. You know, his father had such great respect from all the players that had played for him. In, in all three sports, you know, football, boxing, and lacrosse. And every time I'd come across alumni, they would all have something nice to say about uh, Roy Simmons Sr. And as a result today, whenever I see uh, alumni that played for Coach Simmons, I get the same kind of comments of how much uh, they appreciated uh, playing for him, how much they learned from him, and how much they apply their everyday life to things that uh, he had mentored to, to them as players. Well, I was fortunate enough to have my father be a lacrosse coach. So when I uh, was old enough to get to the dining room table, he showed me with a salt and pepper shaker and the sugar bowl, moving things around, what lacrosse was all about. And I, also he'd take me to work and work was, he was a coach. So I wound up being the mascot. The coach's kid was a mascot on the lacrosse team. And I was just about old enough to walk. My feet didn't touch the ground when I sat on the bench but I was involved with lacrosse uh, when I first learned to walk. A lot of coaches get into the game themselves and it's an extension of their ego. Uh, I don't have an ego. Uh, I don't uh, they say you're gonna play it my way or the highway. I, I let uh, my thoroughbreds, if I had some, I let them use their imagination. fantasy. I let them use their imagination, I let them use their um, ideas as opposed to uh, play my way uh, because this is the play and this is what you do and if you don't do it you're off the field. I never played like that. I let them run. I always felt like a thoroughbred horse. These kids are thoroughbreds. Uh, I gave them the right to run uh, and to do what they thought they could do best. Well, Syracuse University is my life. I was a mascot on the game, I was a ball boy, I was a player, I was a freshman coach, and I became the varsity coach, so the game has been, been all my life.